I don't know why, but I've become sort of known with hook baits and rolling them and everything else. It's been a big part of my fishing over the last 10 years or so, making my own custom hook baits. And this year I was faced with a little bit of a different quandary. I was fishing a lake called the Essex Manor and fishing in the summer, I was seeing fish coming in the edge, moving in closely, and I was presenting fluoro pop-ups in front of them. And where the fish had been caught so many times during the spring on these bright baits, the fish were spooking off the spot, not even attempting to eat them. They were actually avoiding the area because there was a bright hook bait there. So that made me go back to the drawing board and think about what I could develop. I was using the cell, these wonderful baits, everyone knows how much I love them. So I wanted to do something that would match this, hook, this boilie, but ultimately still stand out. So I won't keep you waiting any longer. In this tub, as you can see, our cell hook baits with a slightly different tinge. Look, that's a normal cell, and they're my hook baits. Slightly different in colour, but still not that blatant. They're very easy to do. They're slightly more balanced than normal sort of cork ball bait. So let's run you how, through exactly how you do it. Firstly, you put um, half a tub of Polaris into a bag. So take that tub, halfway there, straight into a clear bag. Then you get the cell base mix. With that, I fill up a Polaris tub again, about a quarter full with the base mix from the cell. That both goes into the clear bag. I blow that bag up, give the whole lot a shake, make sure everything's mixed into you. Now you've got Polaris, which is a floating base mix, and the cell, which is a sinking base mix, all mixed in. Basically a ratio of two to one, okay? Once that's done, put the bag to the side and it's on to the mixing. First thing, crack a tiny little egg in. The one I had was the size of a sparrow's egg, but it'll do the job. In it went. Next, a tiny bit of brown colour. As you can see, the tinge is different and that's how I get it. Normally, Mainline recommend a quarter of a teaspoon to a pound of mix. I'm actually using what I described to the guys, a hornet's eyelash worth, just a tiny bit of a fork just into the eggs. Then, 15 mil of the cell activator, that's put into the eggs. Normally, it's 15 mil of cell to a pound of mix, which is normally four eggs, so you're making them four times as strong. Then finally, it's multi-stim. Multi-stim is an appetite stimulant. Normally in a food bait, it's brilliant because fish get on it, eat it, and it's stimulating them to eat more. But I've found in my hook baits, it works really, really well. So again, 15 mil of multi-stim. That sort of separates them from a standard cell one out of the bag. Whisk it all up, get it all moving in, turn it all, make sure the colour's all dispersed, there's no lumps in there, everything's mixed in perfectly. The next job now is to start adding the base mix. Do it bit by bit, don't launch it all in so you end up with one big hard bit of paste. I've got a bit of paste that I've been rolling the baits with, which is just right now. Look, actually it's probably going a bit dry in the heat, but I add the paste bit by bit, nice and slowly, keep it working in there until I've got a paste that is slightly sticky to the touch because don't forget when you're rolling cork ball pop-ups you're going to be rolling them maybe for half an hour to an hour depending on how many you're going to do so there's a chance it could dry up so once the paste is right you'll feel it it'll just be it'll be damp to the touch okay but over an hour that'll dry up lovely and allow you to make lovely lovely cork ball pop-ups so what i do i take eight the eight mil cork balls that i'm using for them drop them into uh, a, a but a cup of water or whatever just to let them soak it up what that does it allows the paste to stick to the cork ball so you won't get any air bubbles inside it once that's done take a small amount of paste just lay it on my finger on my hands and then just put the cork ball straight into the middle roll it round and away you go do as many as you want finally it's onto the boiling process i like to do them in small batches no more than sort of 10 baits at a time they go into the boiling water for 90 seconds out they go onto a towel, dry them off, and that's where I'll often leave them for up to a week. That what that allows if you, these, you can hear them in the tub. Hear that rat, there's no soft edges, they're just nice and loud, and that's because they've been dried off lovely, which means they go on the hair well, they, they get tied on easily, and they're resilient to the attention of nuisance fish, which stops them from peeling it off from around the cork ball. And to say the results on these have been brilliant would be an understatement. I've used them, Ever since I rolled them, actually, the first time I did it was at Gigantica Lake when we were filming previously. And ever since that date, they've been producing fish everywhere I've gone. And I think it's that slight little twist, a little change that's made them stand out from a standard hook bait. And also, they look safer than a fluoro. So my advice to you is, get on the ball. There we have it, a dawn caught. 20 pounder from Gigantica. This one's gonna go in the stock pond apart from the uh, rearing program they've got in place. So any fish of this size are going in the stock pond and in about a year, this will be 30 pound for one of you to come and catch. But it fell foul to a new rig and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you now.